Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at the path goal theory of leadership. Now, the model basically proposes that a leader should change their leadership style depending on their situation. So the leader will adopt their style or the path, as the theory calls it, based on their circumstances with the aim of achieving an objective or a goal, as it's known in the theory. Now, Robert House originally developed path goal theory in 1971. And the theory belongs to a group of leadership models called contingency models. And all contingency models share one thing in common. They state that you should change your style of leadership contingent on the situation you face. Now, path goal theory can be quite complicated to understand as there's many different parts to it. But an excellent place to start is to realize that the theory is built upon something called the expectancy theory of motivation. And you will understand path goal theory much more clearly if you understand expectancy theory. So let's take a quick moment to summarize that theory. Now, I'll also include a link to that theory below this video if you want to learn more. But in a nutshell, expectancy theory says that an employee will be motivated to work hard when firstly, they believe they can hit the targets their manager has set. Secondly, they know they will receive a reward if they hit those targets. And thirdly, they want or they actually value the reward on offer. So let's take a look at path goal theory. Now, just like expectancy theory, path goal theory states how to go about motivating your team to achieve their objectives. And according to the theory, and we're starting in the green box on the diagram, you should motivate your team by firstly, ensuring goals are clear and that desirable rewards are available. Secondly, by making the path to the goal clear. Thirdly, by removing obstacles and roadblocks that the subordinate might encounter en route to the goal. And fourthly, by providing support, coaching and guidance. Now, so far, this all sounds very much like expectancy theory. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is that path goal theory states not only that leaders should focus on these motivational factors, but that they should use a specific leadership style based on the situation they find themselves in. And you can see this here in the diagram. A, le a leader will se select a leadership style dependent on these two combinations of factors. Firstly, subordinate characteristics, and then secondly, the environmental factors. So according to the model, there are four styles of leadership, directive, supportive, participative, and achievement oriented. And depending on the particular situation, one or more of these styles will be the one that most motivates a subordinate. That is under certain circumstances, it may be best to use more than one of these styles at the same time. But let's take a look at each in turn. So firstly, directive. Directive leaders tell their subordinates precisely what they want them to do, how they should do it, and the deadline for completing the task. The leader makes unambiguous rules and regulations which must be followed by the subordinate. Next, we have supportive. Supportive leaders create a warm and friendly environment and show concern for their, for their, for their, for their subordinate. Friendly and approachable, and they do their best to make work pleasant for their followers. Next, we have participative. Now, these leaders have a collaborate style and they involve subordinates in decision making by welcoming their ideas and their input. And they consider this information before making any final decision. And finally, we have achievement oriented. Now, these leaders challenge their subordinates to strive for excellence continually. And this type of leader establishes a high baseline for performance and expects continuous improvement from that baseline. Now, achievement-oriented leaders display confidence in their subordinates to achieve the high standards and goals that they have set. Now, the next part of the model is subordinate characteristics. What are your subordinates like? And how well your leadership style works 
is always going to depend on your subordinates. Now, essentially, the effectiveness of each leadership style will be contingent on the characteristics of your subordinates. Now, the model identifies four different subordinate characteristics that you can see here, need for affiliation, preference for structure, desire for control, and self-perceived level of task ability. Now, what the model says is that good leaders will create congruence between their leadership style and their subordinates' characteristics. Leaders need to pick the style that's most likely to boost performance. So let's examine each of these characteristics in turn. So the first is need for affiliation, and this describes subordinates who need to belong within a group. So subordinates with a strong need to belong prefer working with supportive leaders as this makes them feel more a part of the team. Now, conversely, achievement-oriented leadership may work better where subordinates have a low need for affiliation. Next, we have preference for structure. Now, this describes a subordinate's preference for structure and rigidity in their working practices and relationships. Now, subordinates who prefer more structure will obviously be more suited towards directive leadership. Next, we have desire for control. And desire for control refers to whether a subordinate has an internal or external, what's called locus of control. And I'll put a link to an article about locus of control below this video as well. But essentially, subordinates with an internal locus of control believe they have control over the events which happen to them, whereas subordinates with an external locus of control, they primarily think events happen to them. Now, if you have an internal locus of control, you're going to prefer a participative leadership style, and that's because it makes those type of subordinates feel that they're a vital part of the decision-making process. And conversely then, subordinates with an external locus of control prefer a more directive style of leadership. So finally, we come on to the self-perceived level of taskability, and this refers to how good a subordinate believes they are at performing a task. Now, the less good they believe they are at performing a certain task, the more they're going to prefer a directive style of leadership. So the next part of the theory concerns the environment, and the environment is another factor to take into account when determining your leadership style, and it consists of three parts. So firstly, task structure, then formal authority systems, and finally, primary work group. Now, the real key to understanding the environment is to realize that according to path goal theory, leaders shouldn't duplicate the environmental factors that are already present within an organization. So for example, if formal authority systems are robust and rigid, then managers should avoid a directive leadership style. So managers should look to boost low perform performance by providing what is not already present in the environment. So let's take a look at each of these factors. So task structure refers to how structured tasks are. If a tasks are highly structured, then leaders should avoid a directive leadership style. And conversely, unstructured tasks may create the need for a more directive leadership style. Next, we have formal authority systems, and these refer to the policies, the controls, and the rules of the organization. Now, these instruct employees on what to do and what not to do in different situations. If the formal authority structure is clear, then leaders should really avoid a directive telling style of leadership. On, on the other hand, if formal authority structure isn't that clear, then a directive or telling leadership style can be very beneficial. So the final element is primary work group, and this refers to the level of support the subordinate receives from the people around them, the people they work alongside. And if a subordinate doesn't receive much support from their colleagues, then a supportive leadership style can be very appropriate. So, 
Obviously, it's quite a complex theory, so let's try and bring it all together. And we can use this table to do that. This table provides a summary of how to adjust your leadership style based on the different subordinate preferences and the environmental factors you describe. So let's take a simple example, looking at the supportive row here. Uh, we can see that if your follow, follower characteristics are that they need a human touch and that the task characteristics are that maybe they're mundane or repetitive, then a supportive style of leadership works really well. Now, one thing to be aware of is the difference between path goal theory and what's called situational leadership. And again, if you need to know more about situ situational leadership, I'll put a link below this video. But if you're using situational leadership, you adjust your leadership style according to the level of development of your subordinates. Path goal theory is a little different to situational leadership because you adapt your style based on the motivational needs of your team, not their level of development. So let's take a look at some advantages and disadvantages of the theory. So firstly, in terms of advantages, Path Goal Theory provides a framework for leaders to understand how their style influences the motivation of their subordinates. It's unique in that it links motivational theory to leadership theory. It highlights that the role of leaders is to guide and help their subordinates to achieve. Now, in terms of disadvantages, I mean, it's obviously pretty complex. I, I really hope you're following along, but I, I'm aware it's a pretty complex subtopic. Um, and with so many variables involved, studies are unable to co corroborate that the theory works in the real world. Um, sometimes a particular situation will require more than one style of leadership, which is pretty confusing. And in the leader-subordinate relation, subordinate relationship, path goal theory places almost all of the responsibility on the shoulders of the leader. Thus, there's a risk that subordinates become dependent in some way on the leader and fail to develop to the next level. So as it's such a complicated theory, let's take a look at an example. Now, in this example, imagine that you're the manager of a small team and one of your team members, we'll call him Bob, has constantly failed to hit his targets. Now, Upon speaking with Bob, you realize that Bob's lack of performance is because his motivation levels are very low. Now, how can you use path goal theory to boost Bob's motivation and thus his performance? Well, you can use the theory as a framework to examine Bob's motivation by asking the questions you see on this page. And you can use the model yourself just by simply copying these questions or making a note of these questions and asking these questions yourself to see what answers they throw up and how that tells you you should change your leadership style. So as you can see here, from asking these questions, we identify several issues. So what we can see is that Bob does a complicated job and he likes to work in a structured way. However, in his current environment, formal authority isn't strong and Bob doesn't receive much, if any, support from his peers, even though he has a high need for affiliation. Now, there are also some roadblocks in the way to Bob achieving his goals. So from this, we can say as, Bob manage, as Bob's manager, to try and take a twofold approach to boost his motivation. So firstly, you could decide to use a directive leadership style with Bob to provide him with the structure that he craves. And secondly, you could choose to take something of a supportive leadership style to coach Bob through the roadblocks he's facing. And by doing this, you'll help meet his need for affiliation. So as you can see, we're using the model to work out how best to motivate Bob to achieve his goals. So in summary, the path goal theory of leadership is a pretty complicated framework that reminds us that the purpose of leadership is to facilitate the success of your 
subordinates. Now, the theory proposes there are many ways to make followers successful, which you can diagnose using a checklist like the one we showed in the example. So that's it for this lesson. I really hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.